what we've done is we have um, interviewed now 15 individuals who optionally consented to participate in this part of the program. Uh, we've done one-on-one -on -one interviews with them and really drilled down on the issue of retrograde ejaculation. And what we've sort of borne out of that is two main things. The first being that um, retrograde ejaculation, despite maybe being an annoyance, was worth it. People were able to sort of weigh up the, the, you know, the pros and cons of the procedure with the risks that progressive cancer you know, has on them. And so in spite, of, uh, in spite of developing this side effect as a result of treatment, it was ultimately worth it. And, uh, and at ANZUP, we'll be presenting some of the uh, representative quotes, including uh, people saying that, you know, they're happy that they're seeing their children grow up and, and other, other things like you might imagine. The second, uh, second main thing that we saw was that individuals, the impact of retrograde ejaculation on individuals really varied by their age and stage of life. And there were particular sub things of interest here, including issues relating to fertility. Uh, there were issues relating to um, sexual pleasure as well as um, concerns around sort of altered masculinity and information needs. And you can imagine that, you know, for the person in front of you, not everyone's going to be worried about fertility because maybe they've completed the family. Maybe they, they didn't want children to start with. Um, so you can imagine that there is certainly a spectrum, but it was really interesting to speak to these survivors of testicular cancer and understand that in more detail. And so I think, you know, applying this to the clinic, I, I suppose we set out this project under the assumption that this was a problem for individuals, but I think the issue is actually quite wide ranging. For some people, it is a major problem. It has significant impacts on their on, on multiple facets of their quality of life, but for other, others, it's not. And so trying to apply that in the clinic, I think we just need to be better at talking about it. We need to ask patients whether they're experiencing retrograde ejaculation. We need to you know, discuss avenues for potential treatments and then sort of wrap around the other aspects of care that might relate to fertility or sexual function.